Okay, hi guys, and just making a very quick video here to answer some of your questions and to show you more of the watch that I'm making, the Rudge Submersible Vintage. And this is my sort of interpretation of uh, what a modern Rolex uh, 6538 Submariner would look like. And that's the watch that was famously worn by James Bond. Just pan over to here. I've got a picture of it. There we go. So there we go. That's the Rolex 6538 Submariner. And as you can see, my watch looks very, very similar which is what I wanted without actually being a homage. Um, it, it, like I said, this is a modern interpretation, so there are obviously differences um, in, in or slight differences in design and materials and what have you used uh, to make it a modern version and not a homage or a replica. Um, I really didn't want to go down that route. So go into a little bit more detail now about the specifications of the watch. So, uh, yeah, the case, 316L, stainless steel, uh, pretty standard for, for this kind of watch. The crystal is a sapphire crystal, but a domed sapphire to give it that vintage look uh, with an anti-reflective um, anti coating, which is why you get that slightly bluish hue uh, when the light catches it just right. Got the bracelet. This is something that, that was from a must when I was uh, making this watch, was to have a really, really good bracelet and clasp with a micro adjuster and here we go just show you how it operates very much like a seed dweller you've got a micro adjuster here which is ratcheted so you can adjust it on the fly you've also got a diving extension here which probably will never ever get used uh, by anybody but it, it's there so yeah um this uh, this this is as good as you're going to get basically uh, bracelet wise um, and is exactly what I wanted you can see here this is prototype number one um, that I've crudely um, engraved on the back so this is my very very first prototype so um, a few more specs obviously you've got a ratcheted bezel uh, this one's a little bit loose uh, but it is only the prototype um, like I said, it's a little bit of trial and error and what, what have you when uh, going back and forth, having things sort of produced, um, everything sorted now. But yeah, ratcheted, uh, the original um, only had a friction bezel. So this is, like I said, ratcheted, unidirectional. Uh, again, what you'd expect on a sort of modern diving watch, screw down crown, got the large crown um, to sort of look like, look like the original. Uh, size wise, it's 39 millimeters. Um, the original... Uh, 6538 was 38 millimeters a contemporary submariner or uh, you know sort of the models on on from those 5513 onwards well 40 millimeters this sits in between um so it kind of gives it that vintage feel but not not too vintage it's a good compromise but um the size is actually pretty good it doesn't wear small it doesn't it doesn't feel small um the the actual one millimeter of difference it isn't isn't too horrendous if i show you here Rolex of Mariner uh, 16610 you can see it's not not a massive difference it's hardly hardly noticeable at all the overall sort of dimensions pretty similar uh, 20 mil lug width um, so yeah that's sort of the specifications um, uh, the only thing I haven't mentioned yet was the movement um, the movement I'm actually really happy that I managed to get these the movement that I'm using are these um, an STP 111 they're um, they're Swiss made it's a it's a clone of an ETA 2824-2 but a very 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 good clone indeed and um, performs just as well as an ETA before assembling any of these watches or, or looking at prototypes I did a hell of a lot of research and obviously I read a lot of articles uh, regarding the parts and I looked at STP I've got some articles here now that I can show you I'm not going to go through them I'm going to leave links but here's STP um, from a blog to watch talking about them you can see that they've got a pretty good factory um, it's not a tin pot company the thing that did it for me really was this article by uh, Watch Guy. Um, again, I'll, I'll post, I'll, I'll put links in the description of the video. But while when he was actually testing the movements, uh, he came finished the tests, and the conclusion was um, the movement runs at minus three seconds to plus seven seconds a day, 
um, you know that's within ETA standards on the wrist uh, plus minus two to four seconds a day so um, you know fantastic there's um, there's problems as well sourcing ETA movements they're hellishly expensive um, Salita is another option but um, again they're, they're getting very very expensive now so um, SDP was an ideal sort of solution um, and that's what I went for which sort of brings me on now to the build process I've been asked about you know how hard was it to, to start my own sort of watch company um, like anything you, you know you need to put in time and effort um, you've got to be determined and you've got to have the money um, I, I had to buy uh, most of my parts to even build these prototypes um, nobody was willing to send a guy with no company um, parts to sample so everything had to be purchased and it was a lot of trial and error um, didn't have any assistance from anyone else in the uh, in the watch industry. Um, didn't go on Kickstarter. Didn't eBay. Uh, none of that. So it's all sort of funded and run by myself. No outside influences, which is exactly how how I wanted it to be. Um, and it can be done. I mean, the proof is you, you know, that that you can see now it can be done if you're determined. Um, the 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 main thing for me though is that I'm able to assemble the watches myself. Um, so obviously that cuts the cost down. If I wasn't able to do that, then then it just wouldn't really be viable uh, for, for for me to be able to do this. Um, uh, regarding the build process, uh, I've got some parts out here. Um, yesterday I was looming some hands. Um, as you can see, I've got various parts here, um, and this this is how it comes to me. Um, that you know, there 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 are companies out there who will assemble a watch and like put a brand on there for you, but again, it, it's just not feasible to do it that way. And and I wouldn't want to do it that way. I enjoy building them, and it means I get to to ensure the final you know fit, finish, and quality of them. So here are the dials. Um, Glossy dials, you have to be very careful not to get any fingerprints on them, movements. The case I've assembled, um, as you can see, probably here it's a lot better. The ratchet on here, I don't know if you can really hear a difference, but like I said, that's a prototype. But I've assembled one of these up now, a uh, case here, to just to give you an idea of what it's like. I don't put the bezel inserts in until last, because um, uh, that way I can, I can line up the pip with the 12 o'clock perfectly some of the bits and bobs um what have we got here uh, yeah bezel inserts case clamps stems so you know this is how it comes to me and um i i assemble them myself here in sort of this little workshop i've made um got some tools here some more more parts over here but yeah that's sort of you know the build process i really didn't want to go down the root of um, of sort of uh, resurrecting an old brand. Um, I was told, or, or, or it was suggested to me when I when I started saying I wanted to make my own brand, suggested uh, to me by people that I could do that. Didn't, but I really didn't want to go down that road. Um, there were too many brands doing that at the moment. Um, you know, two spring to mind um, who were shilled or, uh, or shall we say promoted um, by a certain YouTube guru. Um, the one was a very, very uh, well-respected case manufacturer who now is a pure paper company, uh, used to make cases for the likes of Hoya and Blancpain. Now, paper company doing exactly the same as I am, but um, sort of farming out even the assembly to one of these, uh, you know, one of these buildings in Switzerland that just assemble watches for various Swiss companies. Um... There's another one, who, another company that was promoted has become a bit of a joke in the community. Um, who claim, you know, they used to make uh, watches for presidents and this kind of nonsense. And uh, again, just a paper company, everything's outsourced. Um, and the parts, I, I, I should say, um, are all coming from uh, the Far East. So places like Singapore and China. Uh, I would love to have them manufactured here in the UK, but um, it would just make the prices of the watches astronomical. It, it's just not viable to do that. But as I said, many, many do have the parts made made in the Far East. Um, it's just that I'd rather be transparent. I'm not out to, to con anyone or, or anything like that. Um, there are a lot of companies do it who hide it. Um, I'm not. You know, the, the cases, the bracelets, the dials, everything's getting manufactured in the Far East apart from the movements which which are swiss um but hey 
like I said, it's the only way that, that, that these can be made and, and, and to be sold at a fair price. Um, so now I'll just go on to another question that I've been asked is uh, the logo and the name, uh, the name Rudge. So I'll just show you a better picture here now of the logo. And it's it's pretty simple really that the name of the company Rudge it's just a name that I like. It's an old motorbike uh, or motorcycle manufacturer here in the UK. Um, went out of business a very long time ago. And I, I just like the sound of the name. Some people uh, feel they have to have their, their name or family name on things. Not really like that. I don't really feel the need. Um, so it was just a name that I liked the sound of. Uh, the other name I liked was another motorbike manufacturer called Bruff. But... Um, but yeah, uh, they, they've they sort of uh, come back to life and are producing various different things. So didn't want to step any, on anyone's toes, so I went with Rudge. Um, and the logo, people have asked about the logo, little Fleur de Lis. That is kind of personal to me and um, uh, to my family. It relates to my family. Again, there are people who sort of make a big hoo-ha about family histories. A lot of it's nonsense and made up. Um, I certainly would never... Uh, try and live off the accolades or or achievements of, of you know my family or ancestors I feel that it are just sort of devalue or you know just it's it just poor form poor form and um, to be brutally honest none of my family past or present are really that into wristwatches none of them certainly haven't been uh, watchmakers or watch manufacturers so you know, when it comes to watches, my family history is pretty damn irrelevant. So what is the point of even mentioning it? So we leave it to that. Fleur de Lis, the name's Rudge. There we go. Uh, finally, price. Uh, price is going to be £395, which I think uh, for a watch like this is uh, is a very fair price considering the movement and, you know, it is, it is going to be pretty unique. Um, the availability, you know, I'm going to build my first batch of five, which I'm doing that at the moment. They're only going to be built in, in small numbers. I don't want a huge production run. Um, you know, I, I'm not willing or prepared to pump in, you know, vast sums of money. You know, I'm not using Kickstarter. I'm not e-begging or any nonsense like that. I'm funding this myself. You know, obvious rivals in this price bracket are going to be people like Steinhardt. Um, you know, I'm not willing to pump in, you know, ridiculous amounts of money. And, um, you know, the, the, the advantage of me keeping it small is um, sort of exclusivity. You know, you're not going to see these all over the show. So that's sort of the angle that I'm coming from. You know, built in the UK, uh, built properly, um, using the best parts um, that I can source, great movements. Um, yeah, just a little cottage, cottage industry. For, for mainly people sort of in in the community looking for you know a decent watch or a nice looking watch or sort of a homage even though I didn't want to make a pure homage um, so yeah that's all what it's aimed at that's the price availability I will keep people posted as and when they're built um, I've got a Facebook group um, a Rudge Facebook group um, now which I'll put a link to um, in the description I post on properly wound uh, their Facebook group I'll put a link to them in the description so yeah just keep an, keep an eye on those uh, keep an eye on this channel for updates as and when there's probably going to be a waiting list um, being a hell of a lot of interest so there is going to be a waiting list but um you know more details will, will, will come and um, I'll let you guys know when 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 the first batch are available um, and from then onwards. So thanks for watching. Quick look. Hope I've answered all your questions. And um, yeah, see you all soon in uh, the Facebook groups. Thanks for watching.